Thanks.
2023. My name is Mike Aikens. I'm the chairman and the vice chairman of the day right now. Members, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Chin, Mr. O'Brien, our clerk, Mrs. Noonan, and the director of inspectional services, Mr. Palmer. You have a cell phone or a pager. I don't think anyone has a pager anymore, but if you could put on silent or vibrate so you don't interrupt the meeting. And if anyone's going to speak tonight, please make it short, a couple minutes. We get the drift of most of the projects, how it's going to go, and how many people are talking, and how many people are for and against. Uh, with that, guys, I got, a, I got a letter here for a six-month extension on 190-196 Washington Street, ZBA 2219. I'd like to make a motion if I could, Mr. Hamill, for that. 190 196 Washington Street, Quincy, ZBA 22 19. I'd like to make a motion to move extension of six months. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? So move. Casey comes. On a new business, ZBA 22107. We have a letter here to move it to June 20th. I have a motion, please. <clears throat> ZBA 20, I'm sorry, wrong. 22107. Uh, ZBA 22-107 JVCV Architect for a variance to demolish existing one-story single-family home constructs three, two, three-unit townhouse-style trucks with ground-level garage. Visit a parking spaces on front of 144 Carew Street. Make a motion to continue to June 20. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, ZBA 22-23. 537 Washington Street, June 6th. June 6th. June 6th. ZBA 2323, 573 Washington Street, LLC for a variance and special permit to demolish existing building. Construct a three story, 15 unit residential building with commercial space on the first level on the premise number 573 Washington Street, Quincy. Make a motion to continue to 620. Second. On the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? So moved. Case number 2329. June 20th. June 20th? Yes. CBA 2329. Awesome. JCBT Architect and Variance and Special Permit Floodplain to add a side addition to the existing single family home on the front of number 519, Quincy Shore Drive, Quincy. Make a motion to continue to June 20. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Aye. We have one more. Uh, ZBA 2332. Uh, June 20th. ZBA 2332, Douglas Troyer for a special permit to extend the business hours operation on the premise number 453 Washington Street, Quincy. Make a motion to extend to 620. Second. On the motion, CNN, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Let's get down to the business at hand. Here we go. CBA 2328, Christopher Timmons for variance to construct a three-story 15-unit condominium building with garage parking on the premise number 105 C Street. We have any representatives here. Name and address for record, please. Yes, Michael Modestino. I'm representing the applicant, JVC C Street, oh, LLC. Oh, Council, I'm sorry. No, no problem. Uh, I'm going to, I got to go through the whole list. Anyone that's going to be here, there's only four of us in attendance. You need all four, so... Uh, if you want to move it, you can move it. If you want to go tonight, we can go tonight. There's only four members on the board tonight. If I could just have one second. You certainly can. If there's anyone else here to meet tonight, I'm going to ask you the same thing. There's only four members. They want to go ahead. Okay. You can have a seat. I just got to go through the rest of these. Sure.
161 Summer Street, CBA 2331. There's four members. Mr. Chairman, Carl, Carl Johnson, yep. uh, 35 Brantford Hill Office Park for the applicant, which is me. Uh, we'll proceed. Very good. Thank you. CBA 2334, 203 Rotor Street. You want to go ahead or move it? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. 30, 3840 Kent Street, STR 233. I guess they'll move that one. No, we'll just hold it to the end because they probably think it's going to be a long meeting until they get to them anyway. With the way the agenda was set up, they will last. Probably would not think they're getting on until 8 o'clock. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Council. Sorry about that. No problem. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Mike Modestino. I'm an attorney in Frank Street, Mass. Uh, I had a law office in Quincy for 22 years right down the street. Uh, I represent uh, this entity, JVC C Street LLC. Uh, they seek to develop the property at 105 C Street in Quincy. Uh, this property has been before the board before, so I think you're familiar with it. They seek to construct a 15-unit residential project in the Marymount section of Quincy. It's reduced 38% from what it was when it was last before the board when it was going to be 24 units. The applicant has worked hard over the last seven months with its design team and, and with the ward council of Mr. McCarthy in developing this proposal. Uh, the 15 unit building would be located in a three story building with a garage underneath, 34 garage, 34 parking spaces altogether, 17 in the garage, 17 in the parking lot. The locus itself is 27,597 square feet of land. It's now improved by a two-story restaurant, uh, <clears throat> which was a restaurant for many, many years. It operated there for decades. Uh, that property would be demolished and uh, following substantial site work to improve the drainage management, the project would be constructed. The lot is irregularly shaped it topography slopes from a height of 26 feet at the front end, and it goes down to 17 feet at the rear. The grading of the two abutting properties is essentially the same as the Locust. Uh, Locust is C Street, also known as Route 3A, a four-lane roadway, two in each direction. Direct access is uh, directly across is Mount Wollaston Cemetery. A butt is on either side of the U.S. Naval Reserve facility and the Fox and Hounds restaurant. <laughs> Behind Locust is owned by the United States of America. Uh, there's no residences directly in the area. Uh, the land behind is undeveloped. It's owned by the city of Quincy. It abuts the Broad Meadows, Salt Marsh, and Town River. Uh, Locust and two abutters are located on slightly over seven acres of land. Long-standing use of the Locust uh, neighbor Fox and Hounds has been commercial. Uh, the parcel across the street is a cemetery. It's zoned open space. The zoning relief sought are three areas. Minimum lot area for the dwelling unit. Uh, it's provided 1,840 square feet. It's required 4,500 square feet. Uh, the maximum floor ratio area is uh, 1.0 and it's required to be 0.5 so variance is sought in that area it is i think it's important to note that the garage space of 6600 square feet is included in the gross area of 27,597 square feet and if we excluded the garage area in determining uh the, the floor area the ratio would be 0.07 which is a lot closer to 0.05 and then we have the uh the open space dwelling units required to have a thousand square feet per dwelling unit and we have 617. I would point out before I have some others speak I was going to ask that the architect speak and the engineer speak and one of the uh, owners. The Locust is an extraordinary unique residence B location. Uh, the parcel has two abutting parcels that were never used for residential purposes either. The abutted to the right is a secure fenced-in naval reserve facility, 
and then the restaurant Fox and Hounds on the left. Uh, there's a substantial separation between the properties and the proposed structure of my client. Uh, Mount Wallison Cemetery is directly across the street and is a vast open space. Uh, this development will not disturb uh, any abutting re residences, I would contend. Uh, the entirety of the site is such that either abutting residence do not exist. We have the cemetery, the salt marsh, and the abutting parcels, a restaurant, and the U.S. Naval Reserve site. And uh, they're, they're more than 50 feet from the locust. The purpose of the density required minimum lot area per dwelling unit and maximum floor area ratio and open space requirement per dwelling uh, was designed to ensure against overly dense development of a particular lot. The proposed structure due to its location will not overwhelm its neighbors and occupants and will have the ability to access green space uh, to the rear in the abutting neighborhoods uh, that is not property located in the usual residence B neighborhood where homes are located uh, usually approximately 10,000 square feet or less. Uh, it's unique qualities of this property and the location allows for the board uh, to grant the contested, uh, the requested relief from the density requirements without derogating from the intent of the ordinance required to access uh, green spaces. The site has been developed in conjunction with the Ward 1 City Council of Mr. McCarthy in, in every uh, request that he has made has been adopted by the applicant. There is little or no impact to abutting residences, I would contend, due to the unique qualities and location of the locus, and it allows for this board to grant the requested relief. Uh, I would lastly suggest that there is a hardship issue involved here. The developer has to spend a great deal of funds and efforts and infrastructure to work on the site because of the sloping of the site from 26 feet in the front to 17 feet in the rear. Uh, Jim Burke is here from uh, Burke to Cell Engineering. He will describe what needs to be done to prevent the pooling of surface water at the rear of the property. And this will be a significant expense and hardship to the, to the property owner. Uh, uh, I would also add that the traffic study demonstrated minimal input to the traffic. Uh, I think there was only a 0.1% increase in the afternoon hours of traffic. <laughs> Uh, the report from, there's a report from Allison Rule, the uh, engineer for the mm -hmm. town, the traffic engineer for the town, and she indicates in her report dated uh, July 7, 2022, that the resulting analysis shows that the measured stopping site distance provided for the driveway, this is the driveway to the right of the proposed building, exceeds the minimum requirements. Uh, she also had recommended that due to sight line constraints that the operation of the drop-off area in the front w would not allow access to take a left-hand turn. Mm -hmm. And people could drop off there, but they'd have to take a right-hand turn. It is also recommended by this rule, which we certainly would adopt, is that no left-hand turns be taken in the morning peak hours between 7 and 9 a.m. to minimize the conflicts between vehicles exiting the driveway and the queued vehicles on C Street. Uh, I would ask that, uh, that uh, the architect come up and, and make a presentation, Tim Johnson. Uh, he can give you some idea about the structure and, and some of the other issues involved and certainly answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Council. Thank you. One, just one question. On that report that was dated uh, 2022, how many units did she look at? I'm sorry? How many units did she write that report for? Uh, I would think that she 24? wrote the report at that time for the 24. Okay, thank you. I, I have this report if you want copies. No, of it. no, I, I have one. I just, I, I don't have it right here, so I don't remember if it was. I was thinking yeah, it was 24. 24. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Tim Johnson, project architect. I will give a brief overview of the project. Uh, this is that one you can see as I get it right here. Uh, this is the subject site, across from the cemetery as earlier described. Uh, this the plan is to demolish the existing structure and erect a new three-story, 15-unit residential building with 34 parking spaces. Uh, the building is situated within the zoning, the, set, the required building setback. I'm just going to flip up to the site plan. Building has 
been situated within the required building setbacks and also under the at the uh, maximum height of 35 feet, three stories. The building entrance faces the street and the garage entrance faces the rear. Here in the perspective view, you can see the front entrance facing the street. I'll flip between these two here. And the rear view, rear bird's eye view showing the garage facing the rear of the property. Uh, we are utilizing one of the existing uh, curb cuts on the property, which is at the south corner. As the driveway enters the site, it splits in two. First driveway becomes a semi-circular driveway, which accesses the front door for drop-offs and deliveries, which is shown here. And the second driveway, the service driveway, goes to the rear of the building, accessing surface parking, the dumpster, and the uh, garage door at the rear of the building. We have 15 units. All 15 units are two bedrooms, uh, average square foot, square footage of 1,200 square feet, uh, all with generous balconies. Uh, we are also providing amenity spaces. Uh, on the second and third floors, we have At the second third floors, we have 300 square foot amenity spaces for meetings, uh, on-site yoga classes, etc. And also for dog owners, we have a dog wash on the interior of the building, and also we have a circular dog walk, which is shown here on the back of the building. So, uh, we are also uh, building to the stretch energy code, which is required in the city of Quincy. That's 20% more energy efficient than current code. You make it a nice uh, blanket around the building, lowers our heating and cooling loads, and we are going to be using 100% electricity to heat and cool and cook in the building. We're also providing solar panels on the roof. And that is a quick overview of the project. Thank you, Tim. And I'll Anyone have any questions yet? I'm good so far. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that uh, uh, Tim Burke come up from the cell Burke Engineering. Yep. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Jim Burke with the cell Burke Sala. Our uh, offices are here in Quincy. I'm a registered professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I've been involved in this site uh, since the beginning. Um, we did Your address, please. Huh? Your address? Uh, uh, 1266 Furnace Brook Parkway, yep. Suite 401. Yep. Um, yeah, we've been involved in this site at 27,597 square foot parcel mm -hmm. in desperate need of redevelopment. Um, it's got the old Imperial Palace, and, and uh, Attorney Montestino mentioned the, the topography on the site. It is steep, and the portions of the site, the driveway itself is 20%. Um, so you, you, the rear of the catch bay, the, the rear there's a catch basin uh, that's uh, the failed condition. Um, ponding on the, the back of the site right now um, exists. The, the landscaping, the existing landscaping is at the limits of the property. Um, just kind of, the site's basically paved. Um, what we're proposing to do is, you know, construct this uh, 7,100 square foot building, um, three floors of residential with a garage underneath, uh, 34 spaces total, it's 30, 17 underneath, 17 on the surface, um, and providing uh, significant improvements to the stormwater infrastructure uh, with uh, uh, several water quality uh, inlets, uh, along with a significantly sized uh, Infiltration chambers. Uh, How big is that? Uh, Forty-nine chambers and a seven by seven configuration. The four by four by four concrete structures, uh, substantial. Now keep in mind that uh, this particular site also is uh, being reduced uh, in impervious area. We're actually, I believe, doubling, if not more, uh, the pervious area, creating you know, additional landscaping to the site. So in this particular site. If you go with the Mass DEP standards, we don't necessarily have to meet those standards because we're reducing the impervious area. Uh, the applicant, you know, decided 
to kind of forego that and actually meet all the tenant standards uh, and go above and beyond. Uh, and uh, given the, the location of the site right next to the Broads and the uh, Town River, I think it's appropriate. And uh, I'd say that's about all. You know, we're also doing improvements to uh, normal infrastructure, uh, water, sewer, and the like. So all those uh, utilities will also be upgraded to service uh, this uh, new building. That's about all I have. If you have any questions, any questions? No. No, that's up. Thank you very much. Chairman, if I could just mention one uh, final thing from me that I, I didn't mention before. As you're aware, there's a site plan review on October 4th of 2022, and that site plan review, I would suggest, addressed all the issues of traffic and pedestrian flow and, and safety in its, in its report, and they looked at the parking and safety issues very closely, and, and I think they were addressed, and my client has made certain that they would follow the direction of the, the planning board in that regard. And they're certainly concerned about the traffic, but they feel that the traffic can be dealt with sufficiently based upon what was recommended in the site plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions in the afternoon right now? No, I do. no, not at this time. Thank you. Is there anyone want to speak in favor? Please step forward, name and address for a record, please. And remember, you have two minutes, okay? Sure. Hello, my name is Keelan Bogart Chicarello. I live at 34 Gordon Street here in Quincy. I was born and raised in Rhode Island, but I have proudly called myself a Quincy resident for the last 13 years. My husband, a, a lifelong Quincy resident, and I want to buy a home here, but it's a very tough market. One of the reasons prices are so high is that there's not enough available housing. This simple supply and demand, low supply, mm -hmm. drives up the prices. There is a dire need for additional housing in Quincy, and this is a great opportunity to positively influence the Quincy housing market. It is truly disheartening to pass this lot every day knowing the potential is in question. This is a great location with access to the T, amenities, parks, and Wollaston Beach. It's a perfect location for people like me who want to live in Quincy and raise a family here. So I support this project and I, I hope you as the board will as well. Uh, this project is good for Quincy. Thank you for listening to my perspective on this. Thank you. Next, Mr. Dunn. Good evening board members, James Dunn, 167 Bath Park Street. I support we Mr. Timmons with the change in this. He's, Mr. Timmons has taken a big risk with the way the market conditions are today. Being a contractor, I know what he's up against with the challenges for the drainage on this site and everything. And as far as traffic, there were 200 trunks a day pulling in and out of that site. I was one of them. Let's, uh, let's get rid of that building that's been sitting there for 60 years and I saw to the community unchanged and like I say I support Mr. Timmons in this project he's taken a risk in this market conditions thank, thank you for your time thank you good evening my name is Christopher Carroll I was former counsel on this project I from day one was committed to it and I'm still committed to it a little history on it it started off at 27 units went to 24 and after listening to uh, officials neighbors it's where it is today, the 15 units. In my opinion, when I started out with this project, it was a removal of a blighted 100 plus seat restaurant, and that to me was significant. For the record, there are two curb cuts for the site. It's on record at the Norfolk Land Court, and that's significant. Also, uh, during my representation, I had two significant community meetings, one at the uh, Fox and Hounds and the other one at the Coddington building. And again, I have to say the applicant made every effort to try to make accommodations to have a balance. As far as the traffic goes, in 2002, I met with the traffic engineer and our private ta uh, traffic engineer and all her report, because I personally brought her all the data and brought her whatever additional data she needed, 
was based on the 24 units. So um, it was significantly vetted at the planning board, as council has said. Uh, we went through many revisions, provided a lot of site plan review information. So there was a lot of time spent on it. And I have to say, uh, to get to the point of 15 units, these gentlemen have really taken a lot to balance the concerns of the public health and safety. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Anyone else? Speak in favor. Hi, my name is Rob Matthews. I'm at 133 Commander Shea in Quincy. I'd like to speak in favor of the project. My wife and I recently downsized. Our kids went off to school, we downsized, looking for a condo in Quincy. And I gotta tell you, it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy. You've got Marina Bay, which is, you know, a little out of our league. You've got downtown. We ended up at Commander Shea. We love it. It's, it abuts a neighborhood. We don't go into the neighborhood. We drive, you know, down Quincy Shore Drive. We don't get into that neighborhood. It's very similar, very similar to this. My daughter's looking for a condo. She's a nurse. She's 25. She's looking at Quincy and, uh, I mean, if this thing ever works, this would be a good fit for her, you know. Uh, I think the project is a great one. It will provide exactly what other people like my wife and I are looking for. The project is situated just like ours on the end of, other end of Quincy Shore Drive that is a convenient road to get anywhere from. I know some of the Marymount neighbors are concerned about traffic, but I can tell you where we are, we never drive through the neighborhood behind us. It doesn't take us anywhere we want to go. Uh, we are never in the neighborhood behind us. We can walk to it, that's about it. Uh, and I think it goes without saying, it's certainly an improvement to what was there. Big improvement to what was there, and I think it's a big improvement to Quincy and a big amenity to Quincy. And you know, there were a lot of concessions given, a lot of money spent, a lot of work was done. You know, Jim Timmons, for all I've known him, he's the most honest guy there is, you know? And uh, that's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Dan Kane. I live at 43 Essex Street in Quincy. I was born and raised in Marymount. I know the area well. And I think this serves the, uh, the neighborhood very well because it's it's uh, addressed many parking issues. It's along the T. I think that uh, it, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be any uh, rollover into the neighborhood of, of any sort of parking. I think this is well situated on a main road, not, not abutting any other neighbors that it would affect. And uh, I think it would be good for the transit oriented uh, uh, development that, 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 that's uh, much needed in the whole in the whole region in the whole state in the whole city and um, I think that this is a, a very good project it addresses a lot of issues Mr. Timmons certainly touched upon the, uh, the things and it, it, it really creates uh, really alleviates the the, uh, the the housing crisis that we have right now that people can't there's just no houses available on the market that people can buy and I think this would be great for the, for the whole area thank you thank you Mr. Kim. Well, my, my name is Brian McIsaac. I live at 77 Sims Road in Quincy. Uh, my wife and I raised three children here in Quincy. We, we go by that, been going by that uh, rat infested trap down there my whole life down there. Uh, I, I frequently- Is that when it was open? <laughs> <laughs> Still a rat trap. <laughs> I was barred from there. <laughs> uh, I think this is a great project. It, it's, it's, it's just time to get rid of that eyesore. I'm in and out of that cemetery constantly. I got my folks are buried over there. I got a brother over there. And I always come out to the end of that street there on, on C Street. And, then, and there's the rat trap uh, facing everybody. Yeah. So, you know, with the demand for housing, and, and work, I also work in the residential construction market. And, uh, and I know personally how the demand is. It, it's, it's, it's you can't even get, uh, get a home with it unless you get a huge wallet in Quincy. It's becoming uh, um, Manhattan South. Uh, this project is not in the neighborhood. It is on a four-lane state highway, Route 3A, with the Navy and a restaurant as neighbors. The Quincy Youth Arena behind it. There's no homes around it at all. 
And this makes a proposal different from other under development that people are complaining about. It, it is a really unique location, and I think the board should strongly consider this fact when the opportunity to get some much needed housing in Quincy. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. McGuizer. How you doing? Right, how are you? Uh, my name is Michael Graham. I live at 76 Norton Road in Marymount, and I strongly support this project for two reasons. I pass it every day, and it's an eyesore. And secondly, there's a shortage of housing in Quincy, and this is a very good project, very well built. And uh, these people have uh, came from 27 units down to 15 units, and there's a cutoff point where it, it, it doesn't make sense, and be careful what you wish for a face stop. And you could, God knows what you're going to get. So go on 100% support this project, and I hope you support us too. And thank you very much for your all your good work in Quincy. This board has been very good. Thank you. Can I have your last name again? Graham, G R E H G R E H A M. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Marion Vieira, V I E R A. Wait a minute. I'm going to speak to you. Sorry. Marion Vieira, V I E R A, 25 Empire Street, Germantown. Um, I'm supporting it too. I'm sick of driving past for much of the same reasons as everybody else. Sick of driving past what looks there. I like that it's gotten down to the 15 units. It's actually kind of very attractive looking. And I like it, it, it being before, I don't know if it's north, south, whatever, being before Quincy Shore Drive. Um, I'm still, I'm not quite understanding the fear of the impact in the Marymount area afterwards. Uh, sort of visiting people, there's not a whole lot of business down there for the residents to be travel. And I can see where people with young children might be concerned, but I don't know why cars would be heading down that way in, in a large quantity anyway. And if it's residences, it's not like it's a business where all of a sudden everybody gets out at five o'clock and heads down the street. It's, it's like people living in homes, coming and going throughout the day and not causing a wide impact. So I'm, I'm not sure of the reasons why um, with this amount of things, that would, that would be a problem. But I'm definitely for getting rid of what's there. This seems reasonable, and it would definitely help. My, my son moved to Abington because he can't find a place that's reasonable, it's accommodating for him to live with his, new, you know, his young family. So um, I definitely support this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mira. Anyone else? Second call? Please come up. John, go ahead. John Rotterfeld, 62 Grand Wall Road. Um, I liked this project when it was bigger, and one of the reasons is because we need the new growth. Just at the budget hearing last night, we have over a billion dollars worth of debt in the city. We need the developers to come here to develop, because without that new growth, property taxes are gonna skyrocket for the people who are living here. So we have a plan, and the plan is that we're building bigger than this all around the city. That project that was on Washington Street the lot size is way smaller than this, and that's 15 units with three commercial units on top of it. So um, this is a good project. Um, I'm sorry for the people that don't like this project because I think we lost out on like $4 million worth of new growth because I figured this will probably get assessed for $6 million. We could have had $10 million. Um, but this is... This is a place where I think it's going to be a beautiful place for people to live. So I support this and I thank you for your help. Thank you, Mr. Corpo. Anyone else? Come up. Does anyone else want to speak? Just come up. You'll be next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hassan Schumann. I'm at 494 Southern Arab in Quincy. I'm all for this project because it's a 15 unit. You know, it's really, really small. And it's going to price my daughter who graduated from college next year to own one of those units. And the architectural drawing is wonderful, and I don't think it's going to have much impact on traffic over there. As that young lady said before me, it's not going to have much impact on traffic because it's way before Quincy Shore Drive growing up. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Second call? In favor. Third call. Call a part of the hearing calls. The letter here from the DPW. I'm going to read it back in. To Martin Aikens, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals, from Senior Civil Engineer, April 21st, 2023. 
105 C Street, case number ZBA 2328. We have reviewed and provided comments for the project to the planning board. All the comments we provide have been adequately addressed with the following exceptions. Drainage. The maximum infil infiltration rate, 8.27 inches per hour is used. Another soil test should be done during construction to confirm the soil properly. Maintenance plan shall be recorded, Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. Water. The developer is required to provide proof documentation showing existence of six inch fire service pipes in good condition to be reused. The existing water main is a tenant CICL installed in 1895. It may need to be repaired or replaced if the water supply for this main is insufficient for the development. General, existing lot parcel should be consolidated to one lot parcel for the development. And if you could read those letters in, just the addresses and names, place of support. 41 Federal Ave, 63 Bower Road, 139 Independence Ave, 17 um, so Montilio Street, 17 Montilio Street, 17 Montilio Street, 14 Bayview Street, 14 Bayview Street, 24 Union Street, 159. Brook Road, 17 Endicott, 17 Endicott. And there's In a support. letter there from the support of a couple. So I have Dimitri and Kira Kosheshava. In support, Board of Alderman, Quincy City Hall, 1305 Hancock Street. Support for real estate development projects at 105 C Street, no, Quincy no, Mass. Can you read the whole thing? No, just. Just that they're in Dear favor. members, board of yeah. I hope this finds you good. Health. No, you don't have to read that. And just uh, they are in favor. Sincerely, Dimitri and Kira Kosheshiva. There you go. And we'll do this one afterwards here. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Please keep it to two minutes. Mr. Fox. Good afternoon, board members. I appreciate your time today. Um, I rise today in opposition to this request for multiple reasons. First, the city of Quincy needs housing, yes. And the zoning laws are there to help make sure that neighborhoods are protected from too much housing, from too much construction. This, this parcel is supposed to have a maximum of six units associated with it. That's what the law says. It was the law when the restaurant was open, it was the law when they bought the property, and it was the law during every community meeting where we said we were, didn't want more than six units. But yet, we've never seen a proposal for six units, only for larger numbers. I understand there's a hardship now where, because they want to build such a large structure, they need to do more in the back to deal with the drainage. That's a hardship they are creating themselves by being so large in 15 units. Perhaps there wouldn't be such a challenge if it was only six units. Also, folks have mentioned that it's a great opportunity for families to have a place to go. Well, where are their kids gonna to go to school? Because I went to a community meeting actually at the Marymount School where we had to meet in the, well, I believe it was a common room because the library had been split in half to take up more space for an additional classroom due to overcrowding. So- the Fox, you got two minutes, so. Thank you. So my point is simply, the property is zoned for six. It should be having six. The idea of we're just going to go and get a variance every time someone wants to do something that is a rubber stamp needs to stop. Marymount has voiced its opinion repeatedly. This is a brand new paperwork, so all of the objections from the past are not part of this public record, which is why I'm here again today. And it's important that the neighbors who aren't here are also listened to because the, the need of the community in regards to trying to maintain what Marymount is as a neighborhood and what we can support for our traffic, what we can support for our school system is important. The zoning is there to protect us. We bought into homes because of that type of zoning. Marymount starts at one end and goes to another and everything between it Fox. yes sir and everything in between it should be zoned appropriately, uh, appropriately and variations should be uh, a variance should go when one neighbor needs to be too close to another neighbor or someone wants to build a garage or something happens profit is not a hardship not enough, Mr. Fox. thank you sir thank you 
Chairman Board. Or yeah, I timed it. I think it said two minutes. Um, Mr. Fox, what's your address? We never heard it. One Samoset Avenue, Quincy. Thanks. You have the floor, sir. Kevin Geary, 10 Samoset Ave. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chairman Aikman. Um, Thank you for giving me a chance to speak before you today. I'd like to take a moment not only to present my opposition, but I'd also like to um, a chance to apologize to the board. Um, you know, since 2021, the neighborhood has been pushing back on this project. Um, it's it was oversized from the beginning, and it was on a dangerous piece of road. Um, recently, the public's kind of taken a turn, and I, I feel that the the attacks that have become personal is a little bit unfair to this board. Um, obviously, you've all been appointed by a pro, a, um, sorry, uh, lost my, an administration that's pro-development, and I understand that. So obviously, if you're appointed by a pro-development, then you may also be pro-development. Um, but you've been appointed and you volunteer your time, and I understand that, and thank you so much for that. Uh, the neighborhood of Marymount and others in the city are gonna lay before a case of different reasons why this shouldn't happen. For me, um, the biggest thing, and you're also gonna hear from a representative that, that's gonna say they have approved because it started at X and now it's down to Z, and you know, it's, it's you know, they're the good guys, because they were at 400%, and now they're not. Um, but that's not what I've heard from the Ward 1 and the people of Ward 1. I've heard that they don't want it. Um, sorry. You know, we... I know because I've spoken to the people, I've also spoken to the developers at every meeting, and yes, they've made changes, but they're still asking for you to be granting three times what's allowed. For what? The hardship we were told on Thursday, profit. Mr. Timmons has finally admitted that on Thursday. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, you know, but will the group's profit, will that, what will that do for the neighbors of Adam Shore and Mary, and Adam Shore and House Neck, right? When they've already seen increased congestion and eventually it's gonna be bumper and bumper to get out of there. Is that, is that a stretch maybe? But, you know, once, once the ice has been broken on, on larger than needed complexes like this, you know, where's it end, right? My children, will children walk in to and from- Wrap it up if you can. You got Go it, ahead. sir. Yeah, wrap it up. Children walk in to and from Marymount School, yep. you know? Are, if they're jeopardized because of this, is, is their profit worth it? You know, I'm aware this board takes individual projects case by case, but bear in mind that all eyes are focused on what becomes of this project. What, what this sets in motion is a corridor of condo complexes stretching the length of C Street. They're watching the board tonight and asking, do we also start at 150% more for, from what is right to build? But as long as we start at 400%, it's okay. You, the board, can make it clear tonight that the city is not anti-development, yet it believes what truly makes a city great other than President General's Dunkin' Donuts, is um, the people and the neighborhoods. And that's what I'd like you guys to uh, take into account today. Thank you, Mr. Gary. Anyone else next? By the way, we did try to figure that out. There was seven units, so I guess you're talking 200%. Go ahead. I, uh, Name Mike, and address for the record. Mike O'Connor, 60 Highfield Road. O'Connor, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, the applicant bought this property knowing that it was zoned for six. It's always been that way. Uh, one wouldn't do that unless they felt that they had some sway because of their position in the city to move beyond what the law allows for. So we object, uh, we object to anything above what any other applicant would be looking for out of this property. Um, I was here before and I want to say it again. Uh, I, I think we all stand with this board. We do not want to see anybody on this board unduly pressured for reasons that go beyond what should be taking place 
in this board, in, in this room. Um, this so-called new project, uh, because it was a new filing, wiped out hundreds of signatures in opposition, letters and the voices that uh, need to be heard and not being heard because we had five days to react after the first public meeting was held. And by the way, that's three business days because your office is closed with two of them. So I don't have an office here, but that's okay. Go ahead, they do. Your office down the street. Um, so when, I, when we asked uh, the developer if we could have a little bit more time, they denied. And so I think that goes to um, uh, their willingness to work with the neighbors on this project. Three business days is not enough for us to reconstitute the hundreds of letters and signatures. What, when when are we talking? What date? What year? Uh, August of last year. In three days? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. The first public last meeting on this new new oh, filing oh, was oh, Thursday. Oh, oh, okay. Giving us only five days to consider it. All right, I hear you now. I, I didn't know what you were saying. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I, we, many of us, including myself, feel that uh, our rights have to be heard on this and have a say in this have been infringed. Also ask the developer, you know, in, in their experience, what, what is considered a reasonable ask above and beyond what zoning provides for? Is that 10%? Is it 15% above? Uh, in certain cases, could it be 25%? Every project's different. Right? Okay, and, and so every project is different, but I don't think there's a, there is a reasonable person who could say 150% above and beyond what the zoning law calls for is reasonable to ask for. And that's exactly what this developer is doing. This project is a permanent inconvenience for the people of Marymount, Adam Shore, uh, Germantown, Howes Neck. It's a permanent eyesore. It's a threat to public safety, and it is not an architectural conformance to the neighborhood. Most of all, this the, the allowance to go 150% above what zoning calls for sets a dangerous precedent for everybody else who's watching this. It also sets a dangerous precedent, I feel, for the members of this board, because how will you defend against the next person that wants to come in here at 150 or 200% of what's allowed by law? Are you opening yourselves up to lawsuits from people who don't get what they want? Mm -hmm. Again, we stand with you guys not to feel pressured by the applicant to do something that I believe you feel is out of bounds, and um, and we hope you'll vote that way. Many of us would not object to Your something. Time's up, so wrap it up, please. Many of us would not object to a, a slight increase or something reasonable within uh, what the zoning is. Mm -hmm. We understand uh, that's what you guys do is you you approve variances. Uh, and for those people that spoke uh, in uh, support of this project, I think one was from the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michelle Connolly, 32 Wampatuck Road. Thank you for being here this, tonight. I just want to start off with some numbers. They went from 32 to 24 to 21 to 20 to 18, and now the number is 15. This started on August 12th, 2021. But it actually started a little bit earlier than that, uh, in March, when there were discussions between Mr. Timmons and Councilor McCarthy. Between August 2021 and August 2022, there were 13 meetings scheduled. These meetings were ZBA meetings and they were community meetings. Going back to Mr. O'Connor's um, comment on giving the people of Marymount some time to prepare for this new case, which it is a new case, mm -hmm. we got five days. They've, um, and the developer has had more than a year, year and a half to prepare. So for them not to allow us a, a continuance to prepare for this meeting is not That's really right. not true. What, you, what you're saying here is really not true. This thing was advertised twice in the paper, more than two weeks ago. 
So you had days. Don't say we didn't so, know we were well, having this meeting. We did. Okay, so now we back to the that. applicant is back with a plan for 15 units. Correct. The application was filed on March 24th, 2023 with the ZBA. In that application, here's a quote. The site has been developed in consultation with the Ward 1 City Council. In every request, he has, every request he has made has been adopted. This is not a decision of the Ward Council. It should be a decision of the community and of the city of Quincy residents. The applicant is asking for a variance for green space. And I've heard a lot of people come up tonight and say that um, the neighborhood, it, this project does not go through the, it's not involved in the neighborhood. It's not in Marymount. But the green space defined on the application says green space is the property in the abutting neighborhoods. So that's not true either. Back to Monday, to Thursday's meeting on May 18th. The hardship that Mr. Timmons told us was for profit. This is not Mr. Timmons' first development project or foray into the business. He was part of the 42 Mill Street development, which is the Schumann Mills Street LLC with other partners, including Mr. James Timmons' signatory. A profit of approximately $2,974,000 was made from this development, less the purchase price of the property, which was enabled to be obtained by public records. The sale of the townhomes was approximately $4 million, less the construction cost submitted by Mr. Timmons of $1.2 million. I think that's a healthy profit and there were seven townhomes built on that property. Mr. Timmons wants 15 properties built on the pro at 105 C Street. And we want a development. We don't want the Imperial Terrace anymore. We don't want a blighted development or a blighted spot. We welcome development and we hope Mr. Tim Timmons will develop that spot. But 15 units is just too many for that spot. Back to the 150%. So to ask for a hardship for, for reasons of profit is just silly. I think a profit of $3 million on a previous property is a pretty good profit. I don't think that right, the residents of Quincy up, should be, wrap it up. I don't think the residents of Quincy should be punished because someone wants to make a profit. Mr. Timmons should have done his due diligence mm -hmm. and known what he could have built. A lot of please protect Quincy. Tonight. Wrap it up, please. And Mr. Timmons, we would love for you to develop there. Let's split the difference and maybe do 10. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. There you go. Molly McDonald, Line 28 Wampatuck Road. Mm -hmm. And I will set my time up so you don't have to worry about it. So why do we have zoning laws? I appreciate that Mr. Timmons has made an adjustment to the number of dwellings, but it's still almost three times the dwellings for which the lot is zoned. While Mr. Timmons has made an adjustment, the dangerous conditions on C Street have not improved by three times. In fact, they're scarier than when we last met. We are still a community of families with young children and we keep showing up to these meetings, even on Taco Tuesday, because C Street is already saturated by speeding vehicles. And your plan to add 30, sorry, 34, 34 parking spaces continues to sincerely concern me. I'm not here for fun. I'm really sincere. When Mr. Timmons purchased this lot, as people have said, he knew it was zoned for six, but maybe figured that the working class neighbors would be too busy or too tired to speak up, and they are. Everyone's busy and tired. I stood on C Street again today with a pathetic sign, not my cool ones from last time, and I knocked doors. People have, you know, people have obligations, kids have sports, People are working night shifts. And I have to tell you the hardship thing, this is actually starting to create a hardship for some of the neighbors in this, in this neighborhood. 
I'm only at one minute and 34 seconds. Um, so it, it really is, it's the stress, it's anxiety. It's always like, I actually, I actually forgot the meeting was tonight. I was like, oh my God, the meeting's tonight. And I, I really did, you know, I threw the taco meat in, I left my kid, I my like, help yourself kid. And, um, you know, I did, I ran around the neighborhood trying to remind people because like everyone else is saying, uh, we're, not, we're not trying to hurt your life, but we are trying to protect, uh, really, for me, it's the kids of this neighborhood. We keep having so, this is such a dangerous street. We just had another car accident, and the idea of 34 more parking spaces is anxiety inducing. Please, stick with six, maybe eight is enough, and you know, we will we will support you and we'll make those eight families move in feel so welcome and so glad that you reduced gosh I have a surplus I yield the floor I yield my time thank you my husband will tell you that never happens <laughs> Christine Cody 297 C Street I just, I've been here before. I just want to um, reiterate my concerns about the, of the decision of this. I do appreciate that it has been downsized, but I still think that the variance is, is still 150% above the variance is just too high for it to go. I'd be, I've lived in the neighborhood for over 50 years and I, I appreciate, I know Imperial Terrace is a blighted situation. We do want a replacement, but we want the right replacement and we can't just take liberties with variances to get what we want, and I understand financial hardship has been communicated. I wasn't present at the meeting, but I don't think that should be a reason for us to, to suffer. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Kimberly McGaldy, 102 Pontiac Road. I'm gonna keep this short. I just think it's still too big for that lot. It's awkward. And with the neighborhood, the neighborhood is mostly concerned with what's gonna happen next down the road to Grumpy's, Harry's. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's just it's too big, and then everything else is going to get bigger. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe Cody, 297 C Street. Um, if you want to talk about hardship, I think having to come to these meetings, we're all <laughs> suffering a bit. Um, I think if they went with knowing the variance was six, if they just went with 12, this would be over already. We probably all would have agreed with it. Um, I'm looking. You keep saying six. The number seven. Well, I heard it has something to do with the parking. It's, it's, it's seven. six. It's um, the number seven. Take seven. I'd take ten. I'd take twelve. Mm -hmm. At this point, I feel like I'm quibbling over three, but I just wanted to see my piece. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Good evening, Mary Kelly, uh, 11 Shelton Road, Adam Shore. I sent a letter in today that I believe you received, but um, I will give you that letter, but if you haven't already read it, but um, so I'd like people here. But if, if some of the things that come to mind is, um, is your board ineffective if you're asking for 150 over the percent over what is the law? So what is the effectiveness of this board? So that word comes to mind. The owner, I'm sure when I bought my house in Adam Shore, I did, we did our due diligence. We needed to abide by the zoning laws. The house being constructed beside me needs to abide by the zoning laws. I knew that when I from the outset. Um, people have talked about setting precedent. This does set a precedent, and there are legal repercussions for future developments that come down the road. And it is dangerous. C Street is already dangerous. Turning right now, the fox and hounds, patrons that go there, they have to exit right out of the Fox and Hound all hours of the day, not just seven to nine. They always have to exit to the right. And that is because it is a dangerous intersection as it is. The curve that you're saying is a cemetery that is a very dangerous curve. Mm -hmm. There's no dispute about that. Crossing a state highway, no doubt, that is, you know, okay. So the meeting last, um, Thursday, which a few residents, a handful probably attended at Coddington, I was one of them because it really was not that well advertised, to the people's credit. This is a new proposal. But the letter that I sent 
Um, I addressed the issues about exiting right out of the I have it right here, which I'm going to take out since you're okay. speaking in person, okay? okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, right. I'll, I'll start from there. Currently, the patrons of the Fox and Hound restaurant must exit right mm -hmm. from the parking lot at all hours. I may have said left, but they have to exit right. It's incomprehensible that this same safety measure is not applicable to the owner of 105 C Street. At the May 18th meeting, it was said that signage would restrict left turn only, we heard six to nine, I thought AM, Monday through Friday. I'm hearing tonight it is seven to nine. It didn't say when. Obviously, whoever put this stipulation in the proposal is unaware of the traffic volume. At all hours of this location, at all days, which is now necess necessitates the police station and naval station to have a police detail to exit their properties at high community, commuting hours in the afternoon. That is a fact. Furthermore, the residents of the surrounding neighborhoods should not be subjected to illegal U-turns in traffic through their neighborhoods as their children head to nearby elementary and middle schools, many of whom are on foot. It is a walking neighborhood to schools. Had the property owner adhered to zoning laws, which allowed for six units or perhaps at seven, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. this would have been less of a concern due to less vehicles. Please do not berate, belittle, or negate the value of the existing laws that pertain and protect pedestrian and vehicular safety, not to mention the future residents of this development who are going to try to cross that street, as do the townhouse people, to catch the bus on C Street. If you've ever seen them, it's dangerous. The current proposal does not adhere to either these valid concerns or existing bylaws that the zoning board is responsible for monitoring. The owner of this property knew the zoning res restrictions and traffic exiting the, um, and the traffic mitigations when they purchased the property. Like all, Quincy, all other Quincy homeowners and business proprietors, they should be held compliant and treated the same. The residents of Quincy expect no less from the representatives we've elected and those selected by the mayor to serve on this board. This plan as presented does not mirror this op that obligation. As presented, this new proposal does not reflect the optimum intentions of existing zoning and safety laws set forth to protect the residents of Ward 1 and the many others who must commute daily on this part of roadway, which is a state highway, as you said. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Good evening. My name is Tom Kelly. I live at 11 Shelton Road, Quincy. I, too, am concerned about the traffic and the exiting out of this site. I don't disagree that the site needs improvement. It does. But I am concerned about the safety. For the last 10 years, I've traveled that road morning and in the afternoon. And I'll have to say the traffic's getting worse. It is not getting better. And as a result of that, I think the ability for somebody to come out of that site and turn left at any time of the day or night is a safety hazard. As my wife said, you've also got people coming out of the apartments next door to the Fox and Hounds not crossing in the crosswalk during those hours. I've seen them go diagonally across the street to try and get to the bus stop that's in front of, uh, was that Highland Ave, Longwood Ave, whatever Ave is across the street there where the bus stop is. It was even worse when the bus stop was moved further down the street during the construction and the reconstruction of the intersection there. And as I said, I object to it mainly due to the fact that people should not be able to exit left coming out of that property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Is there anyone else? Sherry Ann O'Connor, 60 High Field Road. I can't hear you, ma'am. Sherry Ann O'Connor, 60 okay. High Field Road. Okay. I'm opposed for every reason you heard tonight. And the most important one is it's 150% <coughs> over the zoning. There's no hardship. They've admitted it. It's it's just not needed. Um, it's it's a beautiful building. They've come down, but they started so high they have to come down. I mean, you started at 32. 
I mean, I don't even know what percentage that was. 600% maybe over zoning? It's not right. It was, it was as if it was a joke. They came in, they thought they were gonna get away with it. Well, they're not. I've been coming to these meetings for two years. We're all exhausted. We, we hope that you guys will do the right thing. Thank, Thank you very much. Anyone else? Council? Hey, good evening. My name is Michelle Whalen, 26 Hobermack Road. Um, um, I guess I'm a fence a little bit. The developers have made a lot of progress in what they showed us last week. So I appreciate that and I think it'll be a welcome to the space. The, I am concerned about the variance and the amount of growth over it. I mean, 10 would certainly be better. But my, my primary two points are the safety going into the side roads of Marymount. I live on one of those side streets in Hobomack. And the num we have 20 kids under 10. I can tell you in the morning, you want one of these days, something bad's gonna happen, I don't wanna be there. And I think that perpetuating more traffic through that area of congestion is a huge danger. And that is really uh, probably another part of the city that really needs to take action on stuff because that's what's going to make the difference. And then the precedence, that's my other biggest concern with some of the other properties coming up. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Wallace. Yeah. Waylon, I'm sorry. Waylon. Council? I just want to make sure everybody else is all set. No, I know. Thank you very much. Anne Mahoney, Council Arch, 12th Ferreter Street, a resident of the city of Quincy. I want to start by um, by talking about last Thursday night's meeting. And uh, I really am happy that they've come down to 15 and that they did have a public hearing to actually talk to, I mean, to, talk to the neighbors. That was a positive thing. So I do want to thank you for doing that. Um, one of the things that came out of it, there was, it, people were, it, they're still frustrated. I will say that. Um, they were frustrated because when they thought it was coming back before the ZBA, they thought it was the original plan. They didn't realize it was a new one. So mm -hmm. when I think some of the neighbors reached out maybe Wednesday before that meeting, they found out that it was a new case and all of their stuff was on it. So just to put a timeline on that. And then when we got to the meeting to find out everything is exactly the same, with the exception of we pulled, the out, we pulled everything out. So all of your, all of the neighbors um, information got tossed out, but yet all of their things got to come forward. Like the planning board will get approved. Um, their traffic study, although it was 24, I get it, it's, it's a smaller unit. They got to keep all of their things, but the neighbors who worked very hard to, to explain what their concerns were, it all got thrown out. And that might be a technicality, but it's still one that works against the neighbors and in favor of the developer. So I, I just want to point that out. And that's Why the would they do that though, really? Why wouldn't they keep that? Because people were talking against the project. Yeah, I have no idea. That's no. not for me. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. So I, I just wanted to explain some of the frustration that came there. Yeah. But I think people came to that meeting kind of, you know, feeling like, you know, we've got someplace. We're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We've got to 15. I will say that, you know, one of the things that I had asked is what's the number the neighbor, neighbors could live with? I don't, think the, I don't think the developer ever asked the question to the neighbors, what can you live with? You know, six six is what you can build if you had if you didn't have the appropriate if it just had the minimum amount of parking. I think they have one over the minimum amount of parking, and they get to the point where they can have seven. So let's just say let's call it seven and call it a day. I think many there's a few people in the room, and I don't want to point them out, but a few people in the room that have come up and spoke. They said they wanted to keep it at the minimum, so seven. Um, the attorney basically said, if you we gave you two, you wouldn't be happy. None of you would be happy if we gave you two. That's not fair, and it's no, disingenuous. Yeah. I want to make sure that's called out because it's disingenuous to the neighbors. Yes, and that's not what they're really asking for. What they're asking for is something that they can all live with and they're still feeling 15 isn't clear. But I think they're very close. What we're talking about is the difference of a couple at this point. You know, are we talking about 10, 12, 13? I think if it comes down a little bit more, what they would say is that they really feel like they've all worked together. They have come down. And I do think this is 100%, even if it's seven, it's still 100% more than what's by right. And it isn't a bad location. So let's talk about that location. Because some people came up and talked about, you know, hey, it's not that bad and it's nice where it is. If you make it a right hand turn and you're pulling out of there, the traffic's pretty hard. And you know, because mm -hmm. you, you can't yep. get into the left hand lane to turn left to down. When you get the first drive. two lanes, you gotta, get, yeah. you gotta get in one of those two lanes. It's pretty hard to do yeah. in coming out of that. So yeah. you, if you don't get into those two lanes, you're going straight down C Street. And how far down C Street do you have to go before you can turn around, before you bang a UE into somebody's neighborhood or hit somebody? And it is dangerous. I mean, none of us are here pretending like C Street's not a dangerous street. And I also want to mention that because we're keeping the plan, they're keeping the planning board in the planning board when the traffic engineer went over the over the traffic study. I remember this like it was yesterday. He said, "I give it an F rating during high traffic, 
had traffic time, an F rating. The, the, traffic, the traffic engineer that they hired gave an F rating, and guess what? It's, only one, it's not gonna change any impact into, into the city of Quincy. Somebody will get hurt. So these are the things that we have to take into consideration when we're talking about this. I do think they're close. I think the neighbors, and, if, and they, the one thing that they asked, it was kind of frustrating, they, the neighbors said, can you give us a little time? We wanna to talk to, there was a gentleman there, I don't know if he's here tonight, but he wanted to talk to the, the, um, the federal, federal government about maybe trying to do the turnaround next to the, next to the um, I don't know if it was the Fox and Hound or if it was next to the, to the, um, the skating rink, but, they, but basically there was a conversation that got the name and the number. They said, can you give us just a little time so that we can do this investigation? And they said, no, no, we're still gonna go for it. I think they tried to talk about buying a piece of land out yeah. back so you could come up by the yeah. skating rink. And, but, it's not and they did, and, and this neighbor in particular right. wanted to take the chance to be able to actually have those conversations yeah. too. And then right. some of the other neighbors said, right. so that we can actually talk to our fellow, to, to let people know that this, that your, what you stood up here and you spoke against mm -hmm. is off the table. So what they're asking for is just a fair opportunity to be able to organize so that they could come up and speak, because they have been doing this for two years, and that's a long, I know you've been doing it for two years too, so we've all been doing it for two years, and so have you. And, and honestly, I, I don't wanna take away from the work that they've been doing either, because they have been doing it. So I mean, it, in the ultimate, at the ultimate end of the day, everybody has been through a lot of pain. And you know, again, when we go back and we talk about what's the, um, what's the hardship, as we all know, if we went to court, hardship would not be, profitability would lose, you would lose in hardship, profitability. It's not something that you would win at. But it's it's and it's it's you don't you wouldn't win a court if you went to court. It's a, I don't it, believe that. But I do, a, I do. I, I think you know why you wouldn't because because it would get passed and then usually the neighbors would be the ones who have to go and do it. But the reality of it is, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're close. And I think if we if we if you say 15, I don't think people are going to be happy and they're going to be disappointed. I still say that we can we can get there if we work together. And I and I really want you to consider that point of the fact that seven to nine. No left hand turn seven to nine, and that was a recommendation I think from the city. It's dangerous. It should have been six to ten, if anything. Right? It, well, it should be. It should be twenty four hours, really, because <laughs> you know if you want to cut through in the middle of the night, right. I think it'll be okay. But when you get clipped and when somebody gets hurt, you know I can promise you that it's not going to matter if they come on a left hand turn. Everybody's going to be feeling bad because something bad's going to happen. But I don't want it to be us who make that decision, and and it's and something happens because I would feel extremely guilty if I made a decision that some, that with the left-hand turn when we could avoid that. We should be fixing those areas before we're allowing large development to happen. We are trying to fix those things. We should be taking that into consideration as a master plan for working throughout the whole city so that we're, we're not having to have these same conversations every single time. But I want to thank you very much, and I want to thank the developers very much too, because at the end of the day, I think that was the first meeting that I really feel like there was a lot of things that were listened to. And I would hope that maybe we could take this back just one more time and see if we can tighten it up just a little bit more. And I think you could get there. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone else? Council. Uh, good evening. Dave McCarthy, Ward 1, uh, Council of 48 Whitney Road. I don't have to go over the numbers. I know that there's a lot of folks here that came up and spoke that are still um, not in favor uh, of the project and a lot that came up and spoke. Um, I get a ton of calls about uh, the, um, the site itself over the last umpty ump years on, on being a blight and um, some of the comments some of the guys made about being rat infested, et cetera, and et cetera. And it just, um, I feel it's time to move forward. I think the number's good at 15. I think that they have increased their parking. I think it's two point, I think it's over, over, over two, 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 over two. Um, they've uh, pulled their side in on the Fox and Hounds. They've condensed it, they changed the model. Um, a lot of things that the neighbors were looking for uh, in regards to, uh, to all the meetings that we've had. Um, so I'm in support of it. I, I think it's time to move forward. I know it's up to you guys uh, to vote it up or down, but um, it's a tough site. It'll always be a tough site. Uh, C Street's not going anywhere, um, but I, I think this is a, uh, a good solution. They have something residential there. I think it's the quietest option uh, in regards to that, that area right there. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Last call. Call it part of the hearing closed. I got a question for you guys, and, and, and think before you answer, please. Um, a no right turn, a no left turn, period. 24 seven sign and make it so you can't almost take a left. So the road stops here and the front of it goes out front so it has to go to the right and they get time to get into the, one of those two left lanes. Yeah, definitely we would agree to. Yeah, that's something that the uh, 
the owner would agree to. Uh, they're willing and to. And it has to be made so it can't, it can't take a lot. Like you have to go out in the middle of the street to go left. You yeah. have to go right. Yeah. I, I think they would agree to that. They're committed, if approved, to uh, work with the traffic engineer to try to make that a safe area so the problems don't persist and, up there. And, and we're going to do something further down in C Street. There has to be something for, for a turnaround wherever. Behind Grumpy's is something we're going to have to work. There's other buildings down there, too, that, that it's a completely different scene than that because it is an out. We have an out there. When you get in that left lane, you can get out of it. Yeah. You go right at, you either go in town or you get on a furnace walk and come back around to the highway. So you're right. And, and you're on a main road all the time. Those are my thoughts about that whole thing. But I just wanted to ask. We're going to take a 10 minute break if we can. Thank you. You want to relax on this? I don't know. I don't know.
get back, please? Gentlemen, uh, let's let's. Uh, the hearing's been closed, so let's let's get some info from the board members. Uh, Mr. Hemmel, what's your take? Well, I'm kind of torn. I mean, it's an interesting lot. It goes from 27 feet down to 16 feet. And that's not the developer making it. That's the lot. Um, I, I imagine it's going to be a, a pretty hefty bill to mitigate that water from, you know, either piling up or moving. So aside from that, I, I, I think the request of no left turn ever is a, is a it has to be. You can't make a left turn. Yeah. That's my thought. So, yes, I've been involved in all of the uh, hearings, I believe, for the past two years. I've, I've sat in on all of them with the Zoom and so forth. Um, and I'm also familiar with the site. I worked at that site for about 10 years. Um, the rat trap, as someone said. <laughs> I was one of those rats, I think. Um, so I am very familiar with ingress, egress, the building, the structure, the parking lot, the gradient issues. Column, um, and I and I do believe that uh, turning left is a challenge. Um, I've been up and down that street a few times in the past week, specifically looking to see whether uh, people are having problems or would have a problem, I should say, exiting that uh, space. And what I found is that if the timing of the lights is is in your favor you can easily take a left. Now having said that, I have no objection to having the no left turn rule if that's what the board wants to see and if that's going to you know, make the case for safety. So, moving on. Both sides are divergent, obviously, but both sides have a common agreement, which is that the city needs housing. So, nobody's arguing that. This proposal provides housing. So let's start with that premise. Now, none of the abutters on either side of this space is a residence. Open space across the street, quiet neighbors. Naval Guard to one side, I've never even seen anybody over there in all the years I've been associated with this uh, space. And the other side's Fox and Hound. So I'm challenged by the notion that the neighbors in the neighborhood of Marymount will be detrimentally affected to the point that people have talked about tonight, unless the unit owners are driving through your neighborhood. Okay. If I don't know why they would drive through your neighborhood. They're going to get on Southern Artery, and they're going to go to the beach, to Boston, wherever they're going. But I'm hard pressed to understand why they would just go off into your neighborhood, all 15 of them, or 30 of them, based on the number of spaces, and create havoc. I, I just, I don't necessarily see that. None of you have children who are going to play on 3A. How your children get affected by the increase in traffic would only be if the unit owners went into your neighborhood with their cars, went over the speed limit, were drinking and driving, what have you. Again, I don't, I don't see that happening regularly, if at all. Noise. Lights. There are no homes next door, behind, across the street from this property. Talking about the open space, I know there are a couple of houses on Southern Artery and on the, on the corner, C some C Street. So, but for the most part, this this property doesn't have a lot of residential impact, in my opinion. Okay. Every property is different. People have talked about, well, the board's gonna paint itself into a corner because if you give this 
applicant what he wants, what's going to happen with Grumpy Whites, what's going to happen now. Every single petition, every application is considered on its merits. And every application is different. And every application has different pros and cons. And we look at them separately. So we're not painting with a broad brush here. We're not worried about setting a precedent that's going to come back and haunt us. Just want to make that clear. I think the, um, the police station is in pretty close proximity to this property. Police cars are up and down in front of this place all the time, coming and going. Shifts between shifts, going to shifts, and so forth. I think that this specific strip of land, this, this particular strip of uh, 3A is, is, is pretty secure, and I don't see a whole lot of people driving crazily with the police station right there. Okay. Does it happen? Sure, it happens everywhere. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I think that's one consideration that this particular property has that many others don't. I'm almost done. The applicant has started out high uh, in terms of the numbers, as many of you have, have said. But at the, sa at the same time, you've, you've acknowledged that the applicant has reduced that number pretty significantly. Did he start out high on purpose? I'm not in his head. I don't know. But I can tell you that a lot of developers who come before us do start out at a number and gradually agree to, to drop that number, maybe as an accommodation, maybe, maybe as a strategy. I don't know. Conversely, the neighborhood has not gone up in their number. Again, two years, I've been listening. I don't think the neighbors have gone significantly higher than six that I have heard consistently for two years. Tonight I heard seven maybe. Yeah. All right, hey, one? hey, come on, really. We, I'm almost we, done. We, we didn't speak when you were, yeah. no, we asked you a question. This we property, asked you a question. This property is blighted. And I made a statement, and that's my job, to make statements when they're incorrect. Thank you. This property is blighted. This developer is proposing to spend a significant amount of money on environmental concerns, on improvements, water, climate, etc. Everyone agrees the property is blighted. You want to see something different there. Something else should be there. You also agree it should be housing. He's proposing to put in housing. I think a two-year process is a long enough process. I agree with the counselor who mentioned that, the last person to speak. It's time to make a decision. So those are my thoughts. Mr. O'Brien? The, the, main, the main concern I have is a left turn. Um, I agree with some of Mr. Chen's uh, points about it being quite a while, and there's give and take on both sides. I, I don't know if you'll ever get to a number, if you came in with, if they came in with 10, you'd probably come back and say, well, we want seven. I just, I, every time we turn around, it's, it's, it, it's he's knocking it down, you'll, you'll, you'll want it knocked down forever. I can understand. At the, at the same time, there's a lot of transition going, and you could end up with a commercial development down there that could make things 10 times worse. Again, I, what Mr. Chin says about the impact of the neighborhood, they're telling us that the traffic people who study this say that there will be minimal impacts in there. The one thing that you do have to ask the city to do initially is to get the enforcement in there to make sure that there's compliance early and then people break bad habits before they get started. I, I, my main concern is the, is the no left turn coming out of there at Apollo. And um, I, I don't, I've been by there a number of times, driven the whole car up, down to the library and back a couple of three times. And those apartment buildings that I see along C Street during the day, some of them are larger than this is proposed to be. And I don't see cars coming in and out of there with backups in the driveways and, and that sort of thing that would, that would complicate it. And that's, that's the way I feel about it. Thank you so much.
I mean, a lot of things I've said here tonight, there's a lot for the neighborhood. There's been a lot of hours and a lot of work, and, and I, everyone, everyone's frustrated. Win or lose, you're frustrated. It, it's just, it's a frustrating process. And, uh, you know, out of those 15 units, my take, probably, probably 15 cars will leave there in the morning. Probably. That would probably be the max that would leave there in the morning. Where are they going to go? Between what hours? I mean, we're not talking a major, major amount of traffic there. It really is, but they can't come out of there and take a left or someone's going to die. That's that's my only. <coughs> and how many accidents were up there at night? And of course, alcohol is involved in a lot of those, but but still, you try to take a left, you can't see a guy down there. You have to get them. You have to take a right. You just have to take a right, and you you've got. You're going to have to wait till you get in that second lane. You're going to have to wait. We're not talking a ton of people. When we had 18 units, I almost voted for that. Uh, I was thinking, we're talking about nine, what the report says, we're going to have nine, ten cars uh, out of there in the morning. And, and this is three less. And, and it's been a long time. It's been a hard road, and I know people are upset. Think about what is going to be the impact on your neighborhood. I see everyone coming out of there and taking a left. You're gonna go up and you're gonna stop it at Furnace Brook and you have to take a left take in that left lane or you're gonna shoot into Boston. One or two things are gonna happen. They're gonna go back towards the highway if they're going south or they're gonna end up, they're not gonna run around and try to flip around the streets. I just don't see that happening. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, has it been a long, long road for everyone? Yeah, it has. Frustrating road? Yeah, it has. Name calling around it? Yeah, it has. There's a lot of a lot of things that happen, but you know what? That's that we get we we sit here. We took it, so we'll, we'll take it. And I'll take any decision that I made. I'll stand up for it. Is my decision going to have anything to do with C Street? Not at all. Not at all. That is nothing. It's a complete different project. Projects down there are going to be completely different too. Won't be whites. You know, now they turn the dog pound into Harris. Thank God. You know, that's going to be. I don't think there's going to be much traffic there at all. And I wouldn't want to live beside a dog pound, but barking all day. She said they're going to minimize that. And dogs don't bark if they're not mad. I don't know about any of that. But anyway, uh, I'm voting yes in this project because we went down and we've been here long enough. And the, and the developer said he's got it down to 15. I don't think the traffic impact's going to be there at all. I really don't. That's my decision. So and these guys get their decision as why. So. Can I have a motion, please? ZBA 23-28, Christopher Simmons for a variance to construct three-story, 15-unit condominium building with garage parking on the premises, numbered 105 C Street, Quincy. Make a motion to accept as presented. Uh, also, if we could put in there, has to make a right-hand turn, and uh, I want that Mr. Mr. Collins going to look at the uh, drawings on that to make sure they're right, not the developer. Uh, yeah, the exit's got to be constructed so you can't take it. You can't, left. right? And the, and the wall's going to have to be there. However, that wall's got to be that they just can't turn left and get over it or whatever. It's, it has to be done right, uh, and I'd like that in there. Okay. No more work for you. It's really got to be done. We, we all went to that. All right. Second. On the motion, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Uh, ask a question? Chairman? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> Every, every project we've ever done is completely different. It's completely different. We're in four lanes going right out of the city. You go into the city, and you're talking nine cars. Oh, that's the way we're going to work it all. Now you're the house probably going up. The way it's sitting right now, you got a restroom there, you think you're going to go up if they put a restroom back there? Traffic would be 
Perseverance. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to take up all your it's not a question. Every job's been different. Look at us. We've done it all. I read my machine. I just think it's better. What do they do? They want to go scale and sue us like they did last week. No, but that's not true. I'm not going to say, oh, you got 15, you got 70 pounds, and you got the plan. Not at all. You know what? That's a constant job to say, put it in my end, 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 when we get to that's what you're saying. It's traffic. Now you're traffic. You're saying that wasn't my issue, but it was your issue. It is. You can cut the traffic. This should be business. Oh, they can ask what they want. We know roughly what the impact of the neighborhood is. That's not a major impact of their neighborhood. I think it's a reasonable progress. I don't think at all. All Maybe I should have just said it instead of my diet. I think it should be my logic. That's not that. We're not going to say you're going to get out. He's 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 going to get out.
Tonight's agenda. Hey, uh, CBA 2331, Kyle Johnson III, for finding variance special permit to raise the existing dwelling accessory structure and construct four new townhouses, dwellings 161 Sumner Street. Captain and Representative, Council, you're up. Uh, for the record, again, my name is Carl Johnson <coughs> with offices at 35 uh, Braintree Hill Office Park, Suite 101 in Braintree, Mass. Um, we're here this evening uh, requesting a finding and or variance, as Chairman has indicated, solely for lot size and a special permit necessary to raise the existing dwelling and the structure structures to construct four dimensionally conforming attached townhouses on the premises located at 161 Sumner Street. The applicant, um, the application is submitted on behalf of Lee Brothers Property LLC, who is purchasing the property from the owner uh, to develop it. The presenters uh, this evening will include James Burke, professional engineer of uh, Quincy Engineering Firm, um, <coughs> DeSalle Burke, Soller and Associates who will discuss existing conditions, the civil plans prepared for the special permit to construct the residential development in a business B zone while meeting and exceeding residency dimensional and density requirements. Uh, Brian Saluti, a registered architect, will discuss the townhouse architectural features design and landscaping on the proposed development site. Uh, we, I submitted a rather lengthy uh, project narrative and I'm not gonna repeat everything that's in it, I would just hit um, some of the highlights. The proposed scope of the project is to raise the existing dwellings and accessory garage with attached shed that encroaches upon a uh, director brother's property. And that's to the rear of the site. And to construct a new, four new townhouse condominiums, provide parking for eight vehicles, one vehicle parking in the lower level or the first floor level of each townhouse and one vehicle surface parking, all in the rear of the townhouse structure. The project eliminates existing site encroachments also on Sumner Street layout, provides two new curb cuts on Sumner Street and one-way traffic circulation around the site with two new pedestrian walkways from Sumner Street to the townhouse entryways. The existing conditions. Uh, the uh, current property is shown in green on uh, um, the, uh, the engineering plan. The assessor's record lists the property at 14,500 square feet. Uh, in other places, 14,557 square feet. On ground survey um, by DeSell Burke, um, the site uh, cal is calculated under current um, modern survey techniques to be 12,838 square feet. The requirements for a residency development is 14,000 square feet. Uh, the site is a regularly shaped, V-shaped, and you can see that on the plan, which is the result of two parcels of land. There was the original parcel 
um, that supported the dwelling that was constructed in 1830 and consists of a registered parcel on a 1917 land court plan. And later it was added a triangular piece uh, <clears throat> that is shown in the 1944 uh, branch engineering plan. Those plans and uh, of each of those uh, that merged are, have been combined uh, by the assessors since 1983. So the parcel, uh, the combined parcel creates that V-shaped uh, development lot. Concerning the request for a finding, uh, this site has been in existence for many years, predates zoning and clearly predates the requirement of the residential requirement lot size for residence C on business B property. Uh, so it is, in essence, pre-existing and non-conforming uh, use, and um, the structures are also, as residents, a single-family home is also pre-existing and non-conforming. But more importantly, it's non-conforming to lot size to meet residency standards. Again, I want to point out that we submitted uh, every single element that's required is is matter exceeded except for that lot size. If, if the board determines that a variance is required um, under Chapter 40A, Section 10, and under 9.2 of the um, zoning ordinance, it requires the statutory conditions be met, soil, condition, shape, and topography. The shape on this site creates a unique hardship in the design, maneuvering of traffic that requires parking, and mechanicals on the first floor of each unit with three floors of living space above. The development is modest and is somewhat modest in scale, it is one on one of the larger lots in the neighborhood. And again, it meets the dimensional and density requirements. We're going to ask uh, for Jim Burke, professional engineer, to go through the development plans for the board, and then uh, Brian Saluti will follow with the architectural plans. Uh, good evening again. Uh, Jim Burke, uh, professional civil engineer, registered in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, Office is in Quincy at 1266 Furnace Brook Parkway uh, in Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, we did do a, a land survey uh, of this parcel. Uh, we calculated it out to be 12,838 square feet. Um, site is accessed by a centrally located uh, uh, paved driveway off of Sumner Street. Um, Sumner Street itself, uh, uh, the gradient runs north to south. It's like yeah, the elevation uh, on the northerly side of the lot is at elevation 48. And the, and the slope of the uh, lot goes up to elevation 50 in the back. So, and then the lot itself is pretty flat, but as uh, Sumner goes south, it drops in gradient uh, fairly significantly so that you have a, a retaining wall running along the back of the sidewalk right at where the, the stairs come out of the existing house. Um, so that uh, retaining wall maintains the grade, the, the flatness of the existing lot. Um, the lot is, the house is serviced by existing sewer, water, overhead power, communications. Uh, I believe there's gas as well. Um, we did not get a chance to go out and test the soils. Um, I know that's in the DPW's letter. Um, we did do conservative uh, stormwater calculations for the sizing of the system, but we did do the Buddhist temple, which is like right next door. Um, nothing but gravel, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting the same thing. It's in the same soil quadrant at, on the natural resources conservation uh, documents. So mm -hmm. I'm expecting the same stuff, but we did use a, a really low rate to size the system that's in there. So if anything, it's gonna get smaller. Uh, in my estimation. So now that I mentioned that, let me, uh, so the proposed development, we're, supposed, we're gonna raise the, all, all the homes, uh, the existing home and the garage, uh, proposing four units uh, centrally located on the lot, two curb cuts uh, proposed in a one-way, uh, operation. Uh, the southerly curb cut is the entrance of the northerly curb cut being the egress. Um, there's four surface parking uh, spaces. 
and uh, four parking spaces uh, in one in each unit, uh, providing a total of eight. Uh, gradient is maintained, so the only thing that we have an 8% uh, uh, driveway coming in to make up for that wall, and everything else is just kind of blended in with the existing grade. Um, Stormwater is controlled by uh, trench drains, two trench drains, which Chen, um, you know, I put those in for him, by the way. Um, now he doesn't like them, so I'm taking them out. And, uh, and we'll put in the regular catch basins this time. Uh, but we have uh, three uh, uh, infiltration uh, systems. One, the large one being consisting of uh, 26 of those four by four by four concrete uh, structures. That's gonna handle all the roof runoff and the rear parking lot. The two small ones are really just kind of designed to capture the runoff as it approaches uh, uh, Sumner Street. We meet uh, all the stormwater standards uh, for uh, the vast stormwater standards and we're obviously gonna be upgrading uh, the water, the sewer, uh, providing fire protection as well. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Yeah, uh, the electric's going to be overhead. Why? Why can't you just run it under and up the pole? It's a good question. Um, I would say national grids kind of kind of dictate what we put in anyway. Uh, but I mean, it's closer for them. It's easier for them if you do the yeah, work. Yeah, I, just I, I wasn't like sure if the load would require a pad mounted transformer. I didn't think it would. I don't think so. For you, it's pretty good. You know, I, I don't. So. I think I think that was a thinking that it'd be like a pole mounted transformer and we could be coming overhead. But I we have no objection to bring it down the pole. I think actually that'd be cleaner. It'd be cleaner, it looks nice. You got yeah. a gorgeous building going up and then Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, yeah. You're right. All right, those are my questions. Anyone else? No questions yet. I'm good right. this time. Good. Thank Thanks. You. Hello. My name is Brian Saluti. I'm the architect of the project. Uh, the name of my firm is Brian Saluti Architect. Uh, my company is out of 15 Newberry Avenue, and that's in Weymouth. So I'm here to present the uh, preliminary architectural plans for this project. And um, so right off the bat, we're planning on, if you look at this photograph from the lower left-hand corner, that's the existing building. So we're planning on demolishing that. That's a, that's a duplex as it sits there now. It's about two and a half stories. There's a uh, garage to the rear of it. Uh, that's a two car garage. And then there's a nice open flat lot uh, to the left hand side. And that comes with that property. So it's a good sized piece of property. And you can see it here in this area. Uh, it's highlighted in red. Um, so happens that uh, it's only like 170 feet to, uh, to Washington Street. Um, <clears throat> uh, now, this area, as Kyle mentioned, is, is zone business B. Um, it's predominantly zone business B, and we're going to respect uh, res C. But mm -hmm. uh, this patchwork area that uh, you're looking at shows about a dozen properties coming in around 450 feet off of Washington Street. It so happens that all of these properties are zone business B. And uh, that's according to the City of Quincy GIS map. So having said that, we're gonna respect Red C for this project. So the other thing to note was that um, the properties along the length of, uh, the entire length of Sumner Street, which really starts down here somewhere, uh, starts at South, yeah. South Street, I believe, and then it connects up with um, Washington Street. Along that whole um, road, uh, street, um, there's a, there's a mixed bag of um, uh, condominiums, uh, um, apartments, uh, single family residences, and there's also a, a few businesses that are still there. Mm -hmm. So, and there's also a variety of building styles and um, uh, roof shapes um, from mm -hmm. flat roofs. You can see diagonally across the street, um, there's two buildings that looks something like this here. They have flat roofs and then directly across the street, we have a uh, hip style kind of roof with uh, uh, brick uh, veneer. And to the right side of the, uh, the project, we have this building here, which is a uh, 12 unit apartment building, which has a gable shaped roof. Um, the 
proposed building will rest on a, um, uh, a flat raised plateau, as you can see right there. And however, on the right hand side, there is a drop in grade. I'm thinking around five feet from that top of that plateau down to the roadway. And then on the opposite side, there's only a drop of maybe two feet. So obviously the road is going uphill toward Washington Street. Like the uh, plans for the project? The, uh, the footprint of the building is like 82 feet 8 inches long by um, 27 feet deep with the gross square footage of 7,460 square feet for all four units. The typical unit though is only like 20 feet 8 inches wide by the 27 feet deep, which is typical for all three levels with the exception of the fourth one fourth floor level, which is basically in the roof line. Uh, each unit is going to have three bedrooms and uh, two and a half baths. Um, the 20 foot uh, 8 inch width only allows for a one car garage. You can see that right here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the four additional uh, parking spaces that Jim mentioned uh, for the residents uh, within the south side area. Another thing worth mentioning again is that um, we made a one-way vehicle entrance and exit uh, leaving the property. Uh, since Sumner Street Roadway, I, I think it's only like 23 feet wide, um, the one-way entry exit should be, I'm thinking, a little less burdensome on the traffic flow. Um, another nice feature is that these cars, they're hidden from Sumner Street. You don't see them. They're blocked by the building. Yep. So, you're coming in and you're parking inside or you're parking to the rear of the property, so they're, they're hidden. Um, a typical unit at the ground floor level looks something like this right here. Um, it just has a front entrance, a garage with the one parking space, plus there's a mechanical room down there, um, and there should be enough room in that garage, seems like to look like there's plenty, to put the rubbish barrels if need be. Uh, typical second floor level, which you see right here. Um, it's like a big open space. We have the living, dining, and kitchen all in one, one space. And uh, there's a half bath here. And there's also a, um, a sliding glass door with a, a small balcony area off the dining room. The uh, typical third floor level, which you see right here, is basically uh, there's two bedrooms there with a full bath and a little spot for the wash and dry. And then the fourth floor level is um, it's like a master bedroom suite with a, uh, a full bath there as well. So um, the total livable square footage for each townhome, uh, not including the garage level, is 1,320 square feet. Um, those are decent sized units. Now I'd like to describe the proposed elevations for the project. The proposed building has a uh, three and a half uh, story appearance uh, from the front and uh, uh, four stories from the rear. Uh, the, height of, the height from grade to peak is 41 feet, which is still well below that um, six story allowance in Ray C. Um, the height of the uh, proposed building is more in line with that um, 12 unit building next door. Um, the overall building has a uh, colonial style uh, to it, which includes gable pitch roof dormers at the front of the building, uh, double hung windows and window pump outs at the side, side of the building. Um, there will there'll also be this um, elongated uh, porch uh, kind of portico running along the whole front of the building, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, and it also protects you from the weather. Uh, the exterior materials uh, were recommended for this project include hardy plank clapboard and PVC trim. Um, the exterior doors and overhead doors will most likely be metal insulated types. The main um, roof and dormers and bump outs are all going to be asphalt shingles. Uh, we also have, um, and these materials I mentioned by the way, so they're all compatible, they're, they're compatible with the um, a lot of the homes in uh, single families and multi-family uh, buildings on the street. 
Um, we're also going to have like uh, life safety features. We've got vertical demising walls between each of the units that will be one hour rated. Uh, there will be two means of egresses, uh, one from the front, one from the rear. Uh, so there will be sprinkler protection that will be provided along with um, a fire alarm system and a main enunciator for the fire department. So in conclusion, I'd just like to briefly show you this landscape plan. This was prepared by, by uh, Karen Goslin and uh, she's a landscape um, designer, and her company is called CMG, and she's out of uh, Norwell. Uh, the plan comes with a landscape site plan, uh, plant schedule, general notes, and some photos, um, examples of the plants that are involved. I was told that the two maples out front, they'll probably mature to be about 25 feet in height. Um, and the ones in the back, I don't, you know, we had some discussions um, with one of the neighbors that are here tonight, and they're not too crazy about the trees. If I understand them right. And, uh, no, no, no. no. Oh. They didn't say that. oh, was that the? Uh, oh, the I don't know how that came yeah. into play. Yeah, the only thing I wanted to say about the uh, trees, I, I did receive uh, a comment uh, from. Uh, one neighbor uh, by email, they would, they liked the plans and layout, they just had a question about how high the fence would be or what was going to be done. We looked at that because um, Murdoch um, Avenue is very close over here in this mm -hmm. corner, and there's another drive in the back called Pearly Drive, I mm -hmm. believe. One gentleman was on Pearly Drive, and actually the residents from Murdoch are, are here. Um, so what we said is this is going to be fenced and it shows as, as much landscaping as we could get in and it shows the different types of trees, but one is a uh, hawthorn and so forth. But if, if necessary, we would talk about a tree called the giant green Evervitae. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a rapidly growing conical tree. You can get up to 60 feet, so sometimes you do it. You don't have to trim it. But whatever it is, we work on uh, the fence height or the fence and what kind of trees we put in the background. And I think it would be a pretty good buffer for the houses in the back, whatever we can work out, so. We'll put up the fence on the, on the uh, facing the property on the right side. The right side, yeah, which way, know. facing it or? Facing the property on the right side. That is the, this is the uh, building next door. Is he gonna right fix out. that for <laughs> Right here. You see the thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh my God, it's like brutal. So it's a beautiful place. It looks gorgeous. And you look at the fence; it looks like it's gonna fall over. So we're brand new, I think, a couple of years old. So, anyways, we are planning on putting a fence along the rear and and you know, on the side yards. Um, in the general notes, um, Karen Gosling mentioned something about uh, uh, on the uh, side yards where the entrances and where the exits are, um, that those plants there will be low-lying plants mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, when vehicles leave in the property, um, they can clearly see uh, people on the sidewalk and uh, the cars on uh, Sumner Street. Uh, so the fence on, fence on the right side that's there, you're going to put another one up? Are you taking that one down or what are you doing? I'm going to have to take a you know, good hard look at it. It really looks pretty it. new. It's just... It's a white vinyl fence. White vinyl fence, like, yeah, it's probably eight foot on top of the four feet or whatever. It's up 12 feet or something. But it's really, it really looks like crap. Yeah, it's a mess. It's, so, it goes like Zed and everything. It's, it's, whoever did it was like this uh, Friday afternoon. I don't know. Yeah, it's way, it comes all the way down. That whole thing, all the way back. Yeah, so you get a concrete block, retaining wall, yeah, and, and then and on top of the, yeah, on top of that, it's got the fence. That's a, I don't know if that's, that might be yours. I don't even know. You should take a picture. Is that what that? I think I do have a picture. Is that what you're trying to say? This, uh, this little. Yes. Yeah. No, the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. It goes all the way down. Yeah. Okay. It's a piece of crap. I mean, halfway down, it starts to do all right. Maybe it was. Maybe did the front in the afternoon, I don't know. All right.
But um, yeah, and the last thing I wanted to mention. So you're going to put up a new one. You're going to fix that one off. Well, I don't think that's our fence. There's nothing. There's nothing fence. Still on your property, though, man. It's on their property, I believe. Oh, all right. Yeah. It shows. Pretty close. It, it yeah, shows. A, it shows on here. It was measured as a concrete block wall on yeah. that side. So. And then they got a fence above it. Yeah. It goes way up. Yeah, it's right there. So. Um, but so this. This is like. I, I think the intent the was on this. As you'll see on this, the, obviously the front <laughs> is. This is a great deal of more landscaping at it because there's going to be a new right. wall in the front and right. that's going to be a level area with a yeah. walkway and you'll see some color. That's why mm -hmm. the, it was designed seasonal out back here and all this it will be grass. It is a nice area now, mm -hmm. uh, although I understand the grass hasn't been maintained recently. Yeah. Um, but we can we high. can be we can work with uh, the building department and the neighbors to come up with something acceptable to both parties. Mm -hmm. Mr. Connell will take care of that for us. Yeah. Right, Mr. Connell? Certainly. Yeah. Any further questions? No. You guys have any questions? Right, thank you. Thank you. You can have a seat. I have, I have a couple of things that, uh, as you know, it's it's detailed in the project narrative. I don't want to hold everything up. But there are criteria that uh, is required to be addressed in the um, for a special permit. I've answered all of those criteria. I don't know if you want me to read. There no, I, I read them all. Okay. I think we all read them all. And uh, it's a different one of the variants. Or, or right. You know, we really attempted on this. It's been around for a while, yeah. unfortunately, before we got on uh, here. But we've really attempted to change things to address what we perceive that might be some conflict with the existing properties in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I want to point out that originally Sumner Street was 30 and a half feet, and now it's 33 feet. Mm -hmm. And we encroach about two and a half feet, and that's going to be solved. That's really right. sidewalk area. Right. Right. I don't know what the paved width between the uh, mm -hmm. curb lines are, but it should make it uh, uh, more useful. Um, and there's 130 feet, 133 feet of frontage Front. there, so it will be significant. Thank you. And, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I mean, I love the building, the way it's even designed. Uh, it's just it's going to be a pretty building. That street is certainly not overcrowded. Uh, four units, by any means. I just want to know what's, you know, and you, need, and you got the park in there, and the guests, they can almost make a spot in front of the guy's car by the garage. You can almost tweak in there to stay off the road part. Uh, I don't have any questions right now, but I might ask them. So, is there anyone want to speak in favor? <coughs> Name and address for the record, would you please, when you get there? Thank you. My name is Joe Carroll, 2 Murdoch Avenue. Ms. Carroll, you have the floor. Okay. First, I want to talk about this building here. Yeah. It's probably the greatest thing that ever happened in Quincy Point. Mm -hmm. it, it, Murdoch Avenue is not, we live on Murdoch Avenue and they're parking in the back of it. But they got that fence up and mm -hmm. you never hear anybody in there. It's unbelievable. Can't see it. For a place so big. Yeah. But it worked out good. But as far as this place is concerned, when I first heard about it, I intended all intentions to come down here and go no on it. I was walking in the door and I met this guy and I forgot that's gone. It's gone. But I'll tell you. <clears throat> I was really mad because that property was owned by a guy who lived there. He's died about 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And even when he was 100, he was out there working on that yard. It's always pristine, mm -hmm. beautiful. And when the guy that bought the place yeah. never touched it. In fact, the city of Quincy had to get down there about three or four times in order to cut the grass. It would be this high. They don't, they sent him a bill. Yeah, I think they did mm -hmm. send him a bill. Yeah, they do. But he, he, was, he finally got a kid with a, a weed whacker. To cut, it was unbelievable <laughs> to cut the grass. So I was really teed off about that. Yeah, I thought you were. And uh, when I met with him and he showed me, I didn't see any designs or anything until mm -hmm. uh, when you guys took that 10 minute break, the five minute break, whatever it was, mm -hmm. you showed me the, the, the drawings that they have. It looks real good. Yeah. And we're, we're happy with it. Very good. Glad to hear that. Okay, I think it's a very good looking building. I think they did a nice job on that. It's really beautiful. Anyone else want to speak in favor? John? 
uh, John Rotterfeld, 62 Grandma wrote, this is interesting, that 100 year old man, that was my great uncle, Uncle Chick. So I was over that house many, many, many times. Did you ever do the lawn? No. <laughs> I never did. I never did. But, but I can't only... tell you, Thank you know, you, that, that the <laughs> land definitely does not flood. I can't tell you how many vegetables my Uncle Chick grew a and great gave to everyone yeah, throughout there. Yeah. And I hope the new people plant some nice flowers. I know Uncle Chick's father, who, you know, my great, great grandfather, they used to have the whole front lawn all in Kansas. So, I mean, that was like a beautiful place that people used to walk by um, for a long, long time. Um, considering the development that's going on in the area, asking mm -hmm. to do four units there. Yeah. I was actually dreaming that someday I might be able to develop that site, but I'm glad someone else can live my dream. But you know what it is? Maybe he thought when you came over, you grabbed his vegetables all the time and never helped him cut the grass. And so I actually bought my property, John. Maybe that is. I don't know. You know, but um, but this is a good project. Um, this is good for the neighborhood. There's a lot of development down there. And this, again, this is good new growth. And uh, actually, the developer, whoever bought this, um, they paid a lot of money for this property, yeah, so this isn't one about a greedy development making as much money as they could make because they could certainly squeeze a lot more profit in here. They're doing something where they care about how everything looks for the neighborhood. So thank you to the developer and thank you for the board to do a good thank job. Thank you, John. So anyone else want to speak in favor? Bosco? Uh, there is one letter here of undecision. I'll get it after this. Uh, We'll call up out of here and close. I got a letter here from the DPW. Thank you for taking the time tonight to hang in. Thank you. Can we read the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, you got I'll it. I'll read it. If you want. The DPW. Chairman Akins, we reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. Grading and drainage, is there any soil test at the proposed location for the drainage structures to determine soil properties and the level of the water table? The applicant has not provided test pit information to the established, the estimate, seasonal high groundwater elevation for the site, specifically in the area of the proposed underground infiltration structure. The maintenance plan shall be included in the condominium association document and recorded at the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. Provide an illicit discharge compliance statement. Four, provide a BMP map drawn to scale showing the location of all stormwater BMPs indicated in the O and M plan. Include locations for snow storage on the plan. We recommend the applicant consider alternatives to the proposed trench drain located at the driveway entrance. Trench drains clog easily and can underperform. The grates can become broken at the slides, making them difficult to maintain. One week prior to any land disturbance activities, the applicant shall conduct an on-site inspection with the City of Quincy and or the City's designated representative to observe the erosion control installed at the site and to review the erosion controls anticipated to be employed during the construction. Seven, the City of Quincy and or the City's designated representative shall observe the construction of the stormwater management system in the flowing time. Bullet, upon completion of the excavation. Bullet, upon completion of the chamber and crushed stone insulation prior to backfill, the applicant shall provide at least 72 hours notice of said inspection. Water supply. Water, perform water flow tests with the city's water department. Two, cut and cap the existing water service at the connection with the mains. All abandoned boxes and valves shall be removed. Three, the applicant should Confirm the appropriate connection, tapping sleeve, and anchor team for the DPW prior to construction. Four, proposed service connections to the main shall be three feet apart at least. So, one, the, extended, the existing pipes and manholes on the street should be inspected with the television pre and post development in order to check the condition of the system. The television report and video clips shall be submitted to our office for assessment. Two, Cut and cap existing sewer service at the back of the sidewalk. Three, abandon all structures. All abandoned structures should be removed or filled with dense grade and stone. Four, a profile should be provided for the proposed sanitary sewer connection and any additional gravity utility mains that may experience potential utility conflicts. 
in general. One, install survey monuments to delineate the property line on a public right away. The monument shall be set by a professional landscaper. Two, typical details should be provided for the proposed retaining wall, including a typical section identifying the setback from the adjacent property, wall thickness and depth, as well as relationship to guardrail safety fences and site curving to ensure that the appropriate space is provided. Three, the existing lots, parcels, should be consolidated into one lot parcel for the development. The consolidation plan shall be recorded in the Registry of Deeds, Norfolk County. All proposed buildings should have a house number assigned by the Engineering Department, Engineering Division, DPW, before any building permit can be issued. Four, the entire proposed stormwater and sewer system shall be clean and flushed prior to final acceptance. Five, submit bottle cap files for the project before applying for a building permit. The file should be in Mass State Plan Coordinate System and prefer, preferably in Quincy Standard Data Lakes. Six, upon completion of the project, submit a stamp affidavit from a registered professional engineer that all utilities, water, sewer, and drain, are constructed as designed and no realistic connections are found on a completed site project. Seven, upon completion of the project, as built plan showing all utilities, building footprints, and finished grades need to be submitted along with the AutoCAD file. The as built plan shall be in Mass State Plan Coordinate System. The developer and or the contractor shall contract a design engineer or survey, surveyor prior to the installation of foundations and utilities to allow for the proper inspection and data collect of the as built claims. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. You're welcome. Is there anyone want to speak opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided, first call. Second call, I guess we cleared this place out with 105. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor, I'm how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Glad to hear. I'll be with you in two minutes. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I have one, one, one undecided person. I want to read it into the record. If I didn't lose it, did I give it to you? No. Nope. I got it here. Where is it? Come on, come on. You can. I will find it. Did, you, did, you, did, you, did I give it back to you? One in there. Oh, here. No, it's got a green sticky on it. Right here it is. Here we go. Uh, this person is un un undecided, and I'm trying to look for the uh, Tim Watson. Uh, uh, regards Tim. No oh, address here, an address. There's no address. Doesn't roach two, two feet nine inches, so I'm curious about a few things. Uh, the height. <coughs> I assume it's a tall fence. Uh, can't find any. Uh, indication about chance. the work, any work adjustments along my property line. 17 curly plates. There you go. He's got it in here. He's uh, he's worried about any work or adjustments along my property line. That's 17 curly plates. So. Maybe you could, uh, counsel, give him a call. And I've already, uh, I was going to say, I've already, that was the gentleman that uh, Counselor Andronico uh, forwarded the email. And he said that he liked the plans, but he just had some questions about, you know, the height of the, of the fence, fence and so okay. forth. It's the same as uh, Mr. No. Carroll had. Very good. So you've dealt with this. Yeah. All right. So we just, he was undecided. His name is uh, Tim Mr. Watson and 17. Curly place, but now he's a little happier that we talked to the developer and the council. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Last call. Follow up on the hearing close. Now it's decision time. I, I, I'm going to say, when I first went there, I looked at the property. I didn't expect to see it, a size of a piece of property like that. And, and it's, it's very nice. I think you did a really nice job on the building design. Uh, I wish a lot of people would heed to you guys and pay attention. That's what we need more. Nice growth, not overcrowded growth. Uh, you did a nice job, and I will be voting for it. And thank you for, for, for everything you did with your design team. They did a great job. In favor as well of my fucking project. Congratulations. 
I agree. It's a good point. I agree. Can we have a motion, please? ZBA 23-31 Carl R. Johnson for finding variant special permit to raise existing dwelling accessory structures, construct a new uh, four new attached townhouse style dwellings on the premise number 161, some in the street, Quincy, Massachusetts. I make a motion to accept as presented. Second. On the motion, I will say I want that electrical on the ground. Uh, I think we'll just change that whole property and just put that in there and move on on the two. To accept as presented with the electrical service to be underground. Yeah. Underground sounds good. Yeah. Second. Second. Second motion. On the motion, saying that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Someone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Great job. Now we got you, Council. Now we got you. Through all three road. ZBA 2334, Chris for variance, finding, demolish existing home, and construct a new two story single family home on the premise two or three rotors. Name and address for the record, please. Chris Gunnison, 27 Red Street, Wayne McFast. What was it? Wayne McFast, 27 okay. Red Street. You got it. You have the floor, sir. Um, we uh, met. Uh, a couple months ago, and we went over the projects, and we looked at, you know, fixing up the projects, and we all came to the that it was too much to, cost-wise, to save what was there to make it right. Mm -hmm. So we came to the conclusion that we better to knock it down to the foundation, mm -hmm. and uh, we can make the rooms better, bigger, and more spacious for, for the prop, the size of the property. I know, you're, you're, you're small, that's for sure. Uh, and tell us all about the project you're going to build. So we're proposing uh, to knock the building down to the foundation. Yeah. And um, extend the back out square. Uh, right. right now it's yeah. half. Yeah. We're going to make a square and then take right. the front porch and make a living space and a, a porch in the front a little bit and then make so a living what's, space. What's the front line on this now? Six feet, three feet, three so, six. Uh, the porch right now is six feet, so we're adding six feet to the living space of the porch. And the, the porch is actually enclosed now. So we're going to um, basically go up with it and close up the top, and we'll be able to make uh, a front porch to the left of it where the porch was existing. How many bedrooms in the front? Uh, went from two to three. And we have uh, three pocket spots mm -hmm. for each bedroom. Um, and then. And the uh, ocean sometimes comes in and visits. Oh, yes. I, they're up on the top of a hill, so I don't think they uh, I, get that one. Um, <laughs> don't worry, Mr. McCarthy puts new seawalls on. It's <laughs> anywhere you need. Every weekend. <laughs> Every now and the weekend to fix them up. Um, so they wanted an open floor plan. We really was kind of hard to get it with the existing house that was there. Yeah. Floors are level. Walls are level. Oh. It was cost more to put in those beams than it yes. was to build in the yeah. room. Correct. And they still wouldn't have got there what they wanted because yeah. right. the right. the bedrooms are pretty small. Right. Um, even now with these, they're, they're decent sizes, but they're not actually right. not really huge. No, they're not. We're keeping the same height. Um, it's already a two-story building, so mm -hmm. we're not taking anybody's views away or anything like that. Right. So uh, we're just trying to make it look nice and pretty for the, for the uh, Is there any deck or anything going out in the back? No. Nothing? Okay. I have no questions. No questions. Great. Uh, does anyone want to speak in favor? Council, you're up. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dave McCarthy, Ward 1 Councilor, 48 Whitney Road. Uh, I'm fully supported. It's another Hausnick cottage that uh, is going to be great. Um, Diane and Tom have um, been together now for a while, and Tom's a Banbury, so he's, uh, and Adam Shaw, oh, it's Pat? 
pass it down. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. So they've been in, they've been in the ward for a long time. They're very familiar. And I, I checked. Down with, the guards coming. Yeah, well, I check with the neighbors. And, you know, they're surrounded by so coxes, it's morals, Chris Bowes. So if anything was going to go wrong, they, they, it, they get called on it. So uh, fully supported. That's going to be great. Thank, Thank you. you for hanging in, Council. And thank you for all the time you spend up here with your uh, constituents. So we appreciate that. I know I do for me for being uh, you being my council. So if anyone want to speak in favor, second call. Third call, call up out of hearing closed. Letter from a DPW. We reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? You can have a seat, sir. Anyone opposed or undecided? First call, second call, second call closed. I'll be voting in favor. Same. I'm in favor. Yeah, likewise. Kevin Motion. Yeah. ZBA 23-34. Chris yeah. Chris Gunderson for a variance finding to model the existing home, construct a new two-story single family home on the front of number 203 Rover Street, Quincy, Mass. Make a motion to accept this presentation. Second. On the motion, saying that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. 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 Uh, STR 23-3, help me with this name. Chisholm. Chisholm. Under? Udengo. Last word? Udengo. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Udengo. Uh, for a special permit to operate a short-term rental on premise 3840 10th Street. You have the floor, explain to us what you want to do. Um, so I'm gonna thank you for the opportunity. So I'm gonna start off with um, I was bought a property last year mm -hmm. in um, 2021. It was four bedroom, two bathroom, very old. It was sinking at the bottom, like you know, in the middle. So um, uh, me and my wife kind of did a lot of work, and we kind of tore it down to like you know bare bone, and we literally like, have it as six bedroom and four bathroom. Um, so we're living on the right side of two bedroom, two bath. And on the left side, which is on 38th Street, we're applying for a special permit for uh, using it as a short-term rental. Mm -hmm. So in that way, we could be able to, like, you know, seeing a lot of money that we've invested in the property, we just want to see if we can be able to recoup some of this money uh, in doing short-term rental. We do, for, for me, as an example, I do, um, you know, have a lot of interest in hospitality industry. So I just want to, like, you know, offer my home in terms of getting um, you know, um, the city or like, um, or like guests to be able to like be part of the um, experience that city, mm -hmm. um, you know, city innovation or like the new growing city kind of right. have to offer. Have, have you been renting this for a while now? Um, yeah, I've done like, I rented it like from February to, uh, but like, you know, long term, like from February to May. Um, Just so, now, this year? Yeah, this year. Right, but you've had the house two years, right? Pardon me? You own the house two years? Yes. Yeah, I've been in an adventure for about one year. So, so you never did any rentals before? No. Just just now you do yeah. a long-term mm -hmm. rental? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, we lived, days. yeah, we lived there for over a couple of months before we started the renovation. So uh, yeah, we have to go back to the full so renovation. Now you got the new rules and yes. we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad you did that because everyone's got to, you got you got you got to, and, and it's good for the city to have places where people come and enjoy the city too in a short time. Thank you. Uh, I have no questions. Uh, it looks nice. The place, the place wasn't nice yeah. before. It looks no, nice it wasn't. now. No, right. thank you. No question. Yeah, it's a nice job. Thank so, you. It looks nice. You can have a seat. Pardon me? You can have a seat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does anyone want to speak in favor? Counselor. Uh, James Devine, 117 Cross Street. Uh, yeah, very much in favor. Uh, they've invested a lot of money into the property. It looks great. Uh, across the street from them, uh, another couple has uh, invested a lot of money into their, their property also. So there's three uh, really nice houses on Kent Street. 
uh, Kent Street has a lot of houses that need a lot of help, and uh, mm -hmm. I hope it starts a trend. I think that uh, yeah. with the, the good job that they've done on both these properties will entice other people to come in and, and maybe younger couples to do a better job So uh, on their property. So I'm looking forward to it and uh, hope everything goes well. And thank you for your time. Appreciate it, Council. Thanks for hanging in, really. I know since since you got elected, you've been here a lot, and we appreciate that. I think it's I, important I, to watch. I, I'm not confused. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. <laughs> yeah. Put it on there. Like, so put yeah. it on the date. I gotta have something there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, is there anyone? Uh... Uh, go ahead. John Speaking of two Grand Wall Road, one want to say what a great Ward Four Council we have, and Council yeah. Divine, because he yeah, is there all up. the time. Okay. It goes um, all the time. But I mean, property taxes are expensive in Quincy, and I think that people have to should have the right, especially if they're in residential B, residential but, C, and if you unless you're in residential A, you have the right to do Airbnb. You have the right to pay your property taxes, and especially if you have your property really good. So um, good luck to the, the owner, and thank you. And um, I also want to say on the record that the Celtics are going to win four games in a row and they're going to go to the guys. conference championship. What's the score and now, John? I have not seen the score. My phone is dead, so I'm making that <laughs> prediction. This is live on QA TV. <laughs> and so, like, we know this. Um, the city of Quincy, we believe in the Celtics. Oh, yeah. So when you win the championship, we hope you come and celebrate in the city of Quincy. Thank you. There you go, Johnny. Does so anyone else want to speak in favor? No one else is here. Call that part of here and close. I got a letter here from the GPW. We the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed? We're undecided. No one here. First call, second call. I got a letter here. There isn't opposed. Michael Vis Vis Visio uh, and Tom Tran, 140 Center Street and 132 Center Street. They're opposed to shop rentals. And if you want to see a letter, you will see it. It'll be in the office. I'm not going to read it all. It's just they're opposed to uh, shut down rentals. And with that, we'll call that part of the hearing closed. I'll be voting in favor. I'm in favor as well. Likewise. Can we have a motion, please. STR-23-3, Chisholm Wengdu, for a special permit to operate short-term rental on the premises number 3840 Kent Street, Quincy. Make a motion to accept as presented. Seconded. On the motion, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, so move. Thank you, sir. Thank motion you. adjourned. Welcome. All in favor? Adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hello. Yeah, yeah who's opposed? <laughs>